in a bar room. I met a girl with a drink in her hand. She had ruby red lips, coal black hair, and eyes that would tell any man. Then she came and sat down at my table as she placed her soft hand in mine. I found myself wanting to kiss her for temptation. Was flowing like wine, and I was almost persuaded to strip myself of my pride. Almost persuaded. To push my conscience aside, then we danced, and she whispered, "I need you. Take me away from here and be my man." Then I looked into her eyes, and I saw. Of my wedding band, and I was almost persuaded to let strange lips lead me on. Your sweet love made me stop and go home. Well, folks, you're stuck with me again this week. I got the job of introducing the program. The rest of my goodness session. <laughs>
his dog Morph. And Morph is quite happy here chewing a piece of a jigsaw. Jigsaws normally are put together by, by children and, and adults. And um, children of course work bigger pieces and adults get great fun. Sometimes working with hundreds of little pieces and obviously takes great patience and, and perseverance to put the whole thing together. And jigsaws are so symbolic of life as well because we never see the, the full picture or nothing is ever clear at any one time. And every day we do our best putting the bits and pieces together and sometimes we have to work around the gaps and sometimes that's not easy. But always with time the gaps begin to fill in. And as we begin our journey through this year and uh, new year, we of course ask God to bless us and particularly to bless us each day as we put all the little bits and pieces together and doing our best to put those bits together. And Lord, sometimes we need your help, particularly when those gaps are there. And we ask you, Lord, just to be with us throughout this coming year. We go back to Morfano for the the last beating as we finish out. Don't let me cross over.
a, a lovely song there from Peggy Lynch and Bell and Agree. Would Mary, you agree? It was lovely. I think I should really do the news some week. Read the first couple of lines, we'll see the how good you are. The first couple of lines, okay. Cameraman, action. Uh, problem. Hi uh, <laughs> there, he's playing tricks with me. The first part of the news is here, yeah. Oh dear gosh. This is not what she does, is it? No, she is trying to Eile, me out. stick with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to try one line. One, one line. line? Yeah. Sorry about this, You folks. might as well try the Irish one, we'll see how we get over that. Um, Right. Welcome, dear viewers, to this week's news. And here are the results of this week's Parish Lotter draw, which was held in the Wallace Arms on Sunday night. Now, aren't I doing all right? Continue on. No. Go on. We'll finish the lot of results in here. Numbers drawn were 6, 25, 26, 28, and the jackpot was in one. A hundred euro went to Michael Healy, the Shane View. The seller was Tom Carroll, and he got 50 euro seller's prize. Not so bad. You're going to read the news some week. No, I don't think so. We'll leave that with Eile. Oh, yeah, must welcome Bernie home. He's watching us with his tin toes cocked up to the fire. Hello, Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> and I went still to uh, Linda Maxweeney from Kilcommon, who watches our programme every week. And I think that's it for hellos, is it? Yeah, oh, I will say hello to Geraldine. We got this email. Well, Sean Radley got this email at Christmas. I only got it this week. How did that happen? I don't know. We'll have to ask Sean Radley. Maybe you better read that because you're better reading things than No, I, I think it's addressed to you. So, And you're saying you want to read Eileen's news. You can read the email. No, I think I, I'll stick with the news. Okay. Here well, are the results of this week's <laughs> Parish Lotter draw, which was held in the Wallace Arms. You are Sunday totally night. obsessed by my news tonight. He's still... <laughs> no, I show Don't you. interrupt me now. I, I, I want you. to get as far as the second sentence. Uh, Let me start on. again. I'll let you start again. to become the news right. reader. <laughs> <laughs> to become the news reader. Excuse me. Here are the results of this week's Parish Lotto draw, which was a fix, which was held in the Wallace Arms on Sunday night. Numbers drawn were 6, 25, 6, 25, If you'll take over my and, news, I'll have to go out spreading silage. And there's a problem here. I'll have there's to go out cutting silage if you click over my You're news. You're quite welcome. I'll have to do your job. Ah. <laughs> but anyway, there's a problem here, are there? What is the problem? Uh, well, no, I was upset. Um, the, the no, you think that's last week's news. No, yeah. it is not. Can I read The this? same the, man, the, the, Michael Healy, yes. and Roshan View, I'll he start again, Eileen. Start again. Yes. Here are the results of this week's Parish Lotto draw, which was held in the Wallace Arms on Sunday night. The numbers drawn were 6, 25, 26, 28, and the jackpot was not won. Yeah. And 100 euro went to Michael Healy, Dushan View, and the seller was Tom Carroll. What's the story? Wasn't he very lucky? He won it last week before. He won it the 100 the week before, and the same seller, Tom Carroll. Tom got 50, and your man got 100. How am I doing with the news, Eileen? Uh, 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 well, stick now to spreading silence. <laughs> Good evening, viewers, and welcome back again. Well, Brendan, have the, the shamrock picked yet? Well, uh, I have the picture, I'll give you a chance, but it's to be gone dry, but um, it's what I picked it. Is now. there shamrock there this, 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 it's this year? It's scarce enough, but a bit of it there, anyway. Yeah, I suppose. Uh, we won't move it out, isn't it? Yeah. <coughs> we're, we're in the mood of Patrick's Day, anyway. We have a, a sheep. And oh, yes. And a leprechaun. And, and uh, flags. And flags. Well, we What man do we want? Tell me, it's bad old weather in. in Everything isn't it? Cold Bad weather, mm. cold weather. But uh, on on Sunday last, uh, I, I went out to the straw, yeah. and uh, I seen a sheep heavy lamb. It's snow underneath the lamb and snowing down top. And came back again an hour after, and the lamb was up so flying up. So. Oh yeah, that the lamb doesn't mind cold weather. The, the yeah. lamb, the driving rain is what the lamb. I couldn't believe it. Days of, couldn't believe it. And uh, and the crows aren't in. They're not in recession. I see them building away today. Was there? Just well, I know it. So I said, "Don't you build in the square now, Tom?" I could sell you crows. Yeah. Well, I said, "Don't you build in the square now, Tom?" Yeah. No recession there. No, no, no. They're so very good builders. Actually, the a crow it could um, could take down if he didn't like the nest he was in. He would take it away and put it up in a different tree. The very same nest. Oh yes. So. You have you for it this, this week? You're We're going back to '98 this week to Oban actually, up to the Caliban stable. We had to unveil the plaque there for the start of the. The bottle rod celebrations. So, so that was a, a mighty event. So mighty over event. to the nineteen seven or nineteen ninety eight. Nineteen ninety eight. Eleven years ago.
Welcome to Ireland and in particular to the southwestern part of the Emerald Isle. In fact, we arrive in Castle Island, County Kerry, the home of John Murphy, who in 1748 was responsible for the construction of the Cork Kerry Strait Road, later to be known as the Butter Road. The road ran from Cork through Mill Street to Killarney. It was at Oban near Mill Street that the enthusiastic community uh, celebrated the 250th anniversary of the building of the Butter Road. Whatever the season, the strikingly beautiful scenery of Oban never fails to impress. Christian heritage of the Oban people is reflected in the ever peaceful St. John's Holy Well at Mushra. People have lived here for four and a half thousand years. A people who appreciate their rich cultural heritage. A people who combine traditional and modern methods of farming in such a harmonious manner. community always realised the importance of the Butter Road and felt that this all-important scenic route should be promoted far and wide. For years, Firkins of Butter left Killarney, en route for Cork's Butter Exchange, taking a rest at the Kerryman's Table by Mushra Mountain. It's not too often that we can celebrate the actual birthday of a road, but that is exactly what happened here in the Oban Mushra area of Mill Street in May 1998. Here we are on the actual Butter Road itself, and I'm very near the very impressive uh, plaque which was unveiled to commemorate the 250th birthday, or the anniversary, of the construction of the renowned Cork Carry Butter Road. Yes, sir. 
Urban Social Club decided to mark this most historic event by organising a, a weekend of commemoration. And this was, in fact, a weekend that was totally superb and unforgettable. We're now going to bring you highlights of that very special weekend, which was held from the 1st to the 3rd of May, 1998. But firstly, we look back at the preparations and we join the prestigious press conference which was held at Oban Community Centre. We meet Jack Lane, author of This History of the Butter Road, the source of inspiration for the May 1998 celebrations. So many changes going on at the moment with, with the basis of agriculture here that we've got to think about fundamental changes. And I quite agree with you, that's one, that's one way we should not go. Uh, tourism is, is another way, but it's not the be all and end all. But I think that's all I can think of anyway. This is one thing we can develop and it can lead on to other things. And I think we, by celebrating this, uh, this thing in May, we're not just uh, doing it for the sake of doing it. I think it can, it can, uh, we, could, uh, we should start putting pressure on the, the county council to develop it, to put signposts on it, to make it a, a tourist attraction. At the prestigious press conference held at the Oban Community Centre, details of the May celebrations were outlined. Maybe Tom will put you up by his menu. <laughs> and, and they have no business. Guests were treated to refreshments in the style of the 18th century. Crew beans, homemade wine, potato cakes, maize bread and fresh butter were served to an appreciative audience. Road. So we're going, I think we're going over now to Crystal Springs and they're doing the slush. I don't know anything about it. Oh, well, you want to be learning now. <laughs> too uh, late, too late. Teaching all damn new tricks. Yes, yeah, <laughs> quite difficult. There's a kind of a ladies one anyway, I think. <laughs> Forget about it. M mean to be thin in the ground. Yes. We'll have a look at it, we'll count the steps. I guess she's got a reason, but I just don't want to come Cause 
Coming there from some wonderful, wonderful dancing there at the Lorna Bar in Ballinagree. From Ballinagree now, let's go to Colony Creeve. And where on Friday the 6th of March 2009, a very historic occasion when Minister for Education and Science, Mr. Bat O'Keefe, arrived to actually raise the green flag on that very special day. So now over to Colin National School.
Amen. Is a Murphy again? Amen, Murphy. Yeah. And the happiness of having you and keyboards patches here behind. Give a big hand, to Amen. Yeah. Okay. Come right. on, yeah. Amen. Here comes Amen. Do you want to bite your butt now? The sun comes up and throws its light into my window, catching me yawning. I persuade my eyes to open and begin to realize the day is dawning. Then I reach out and feel the warmth of you curl up beside me once again. the exciting search for a star and of course don't forget tomorrow night the Wallace Arms for the next stage of search for a star there we were over in the Horrigan's Bar in Newmarket but now from Newmarket we're going to go to County Kerry to the Kingdom and to Abbey Dorney tell us more yes. William we were back there on that Sunday it was fine as usual back there like it's good weather back there for and every year this isn't your first time there William no we're go back there every year. In fact William is very popular at this venue because when they see William they know that there's a terrific recording going to be made of this annual event and I mean to say it is a huge event. Yeah it is very big on the day when we met up with Sean Kelly and the day. Indeed and, and uh, Jimmy, Dean, uh, Jimmy Deanahan isn't that right? That's right yeah. Uh, the we uh, get a lot of the plowing in with the horses and um, absolutely. different. Activities. And at the end of the day do you remember the sheaf throwing? That's right, yeah. My goodness, it was some... And we even actually had the privilege of meeting the All-Ireland Chief thr Thrower. From That's right, uh, he was there on the day. He was from Nocknagoshal. Nocknagoshal, so there you go. Yeah. But uh, this, there's some very exciting footage here, I think, William. There is, and we met a lot of people out there that get to receive us back around. Indeed. Boston. Not That's right, and uh, uh, out near Castle Island. That's right. Yeah, yeah. there. Who and we send them our very best wishes there tonight because we know they are tuned in to us, and I think they are really going to enjoy this. And by the way, do you remember the panoramic view that we got from That's the right. from the hoist? Yes. Right. And each stage we went up, it sort of shook a little, That's and right. <laughs> <laughs> it got a little bit slightly scary. But we got there, we got and we got a. Terrific panoramic views. And got back down again. Oh, it's really important. <laughs> we did get back down. So it was, uh, was night time when we left uh, Abidorney. It was, yeah. That's right, because uh, uh, it was it is actually a very full day uh, on the occasion itself. So Yeah, it is like a mini plowing match. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Match, yeah. And in fact, it is hoped that on some occasion there will have the national ploughing championship yeah, there. they hope to have it yes. there at some stage. Because apparently it was in Ardfert a number of years ago in County Kerry. But at this point I think people are really anxious to see yeah. this very special footage. William on camera in a very special way and a full day all edited down to a very special feature now on Abby Dorney's ploughing match. Yes indeed in beautiful County Kerry this is the ploughing match here at Abbey Dorney. It's the annual ploughing match and it's the 22nd of February 
2009. And yes, William Fitzgerald on camera here, we're about to record a very special day indeed. And we're blessed with very beautiful weather here in uh, springtime here. We're only seven kilometres from Tralee and just one kilometre outside Abidorney itself. And so we've moved undercover and meeting uh, for the very first time one of the chief coordinators of this very, very special annual event, Ger McCarthy. Hello, Ger, and a very special day here in Abidorney. Well, it's a big day, all right, for us, you know, even though unfortunately we had to postpone over the weather going back in January, but uh, God is on our side and we had the child to Prague out there over the last two weeks, so things are looking good anyway. And it's really worked today. <laughs> well, I suppose he has somebody to say in the matter anyway. The amount of preparation that goes into this annual event must be quite phenomenal. Yeah, well, there's a, a committee of uh, 19 hard-working men and uh, we get together usually in uh, November and we and uh, we plan our events, but it falls into place kind of. It's uh, Every fellow has a kind of a job to do and a big role to play in it. All falls into place, but there's a lot of planning. But we have a, a very strong boss and, and manager over us, Tom O'Mahony. He's the main coordinator and he keeps us on our heels. But uh, yes, there's a lot of work in it. And as ploughing matches go uh, there, Ger, this must be one of the largest in the country. Well, I suppose for down to a small event, we'll say down to the grassroots level of it, uh, it's probably from, from what I've seen going around, it, it probably would be one of them. You know, even though we have only four matches in the county. But from other uh, would say ones outside the county, I don't see too many of the trade shows. But then again, everybody has different ideas. But we like to put on this kind of a show. It is good for the parish, good for the exhibitors who are very good to us and our sponsors. And we have to take into consideration the people who sponsor us year in and year out. And this is a good day for them to show off their new wares as well. And clearly there is a great community spirit here. Oh yes, yes, we have a, a big backing from the community, all right, and uh, you can see today everybody is willing to, to, to give a hand at some level or another, helping out with stewarding and everything else, you know, so we're very grateful in that field, yes. We're delighted also to be joined by Michael Neenan, whom you'll remember from our uh, transmission last year. And my goodness, Michael, very popular man uh, uh, because of your wonderful comments about uh, generally this uh, setting here in Abidorney. Well, Michael, the past year, how has everything been going with you? Well, we're still here anyway. We're still in, in, in one piece and we're alive, which is, I suppose, no bad feat, is it? But, um, as, I suppose in general it was not a very fair year for the farming community. Yes. Sure, um, we got no summer like, you know, and, and uh, cattle, are in, cattle are in two winters. They're in the winter before the winter and the winter that we've just had. So, I mean, uh, feed stuff is scarce and everything, but um, I suppose uh, the old people used to always say uh, one year follows another and to leave itself out like, but... Um, and we certainly have to take that into account. We'll but have a course, here yeah. again today, uh, Michael, a great atmosphere here. Oh, there is a fantastic atmosphere. As I said there before, like um, uh, credit has to go to the committee here in Abidorne. I mean, they put uh, everything they have into it and it, it pays off for them. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for them early on, on, on in January. The weather wasn't very favourable, but right. it, it has it has come round again. And, and uh, so it is a fantastic turnout here today. Wonderful. You wouldn't see it, you wouldn't see it anywhere in in, in, in any any small community in Ireland. You wouldn't see this in, like, at the moment. Like Great and so the, the 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 crowds look, the crowds are, are, are coming from all sides, isn't it? Like you know, Absolutely. it is a great family day out here. Great, great. Yeah. yeah. Now we're looking over here at some wonderful examples of of uh, of sheep. Uh, perhaps you might uh, give us your insight insight into this? Well, the, the insight is very simple. If you have a love for the sheep, you'll have these animals. If you haven't a love for the sheep, you'll have them in a plate with a bit of a onion and a bit of gravy. But, uh, <laughs> we, I see what you mean. We, we have here, we have the, those white faced there, are, 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 as you can see in the watch, they are pedigree textiles. Right, they are a textile breed. And this brown lady here, look, she is what's known as a commercial. She is a half textile, and she's putting lamb to the pedigree textile, and they are her two offsprings. Look, Beautiful. they are two Beautiful. commercial lambs, like which were born around the 10th and 11th of January. So hopefully they'll be in somebody's plate for Easter Sunday. Oh, <laughs> so, no, no, no we, it's a cool thing we, we to can. say, but you're, yeah. I see what yeah. you, Michael. We do hope we'll meet you again next year, and Thanks may you have a very happy year. Thank you very much. And, Thanks for everything and enjoy your day. Well now, as you can see, we're reaching the heights 
and we're certainly going to a really, really uh, panoramic view at this particular point. We are being very kindly brought to a most amazing height here. And as you can see, we're going right up now, right over, and uh, it's getting a slight bit windier and slightly cooler as we move up. Captain, I know why, but he was so deficient, and we kicked up my life, but we crossed them in the 
This particular point we'll have to go over to a wonderful singer, a singer that's a favourite of William and many of the Fitzgerald we'll family. Out the same way we came in, right? We're no. exactly. out the same way we came <laughs> Big Tom. So over to Big Tom <laughs> and go. until next week, Slaughter is back at J Watch out we'd be in the streets with the camera. <laughs> Here we go, Tom. Here we go, Tom. Who you know or where you've been Makes no difference who you are Skid Row Joe or Superstar You're going out the same way you came in We are born to this world without a thing And we leave it just as naked as we came Came and drive a coupe de bill On a mansion on the hill don't mean nothing when St. Peter calls your name Oh, you're going out the same way you came in Someone will load a fire next to kin Some will weep and some will moan Some will spit upon your stone But you're going out the same way you came in All your fancy clothes Then they'll figure out Just who and what you own Then the lawyers line their nest And your kinfolk gets the rest Cause you can't take it with you When you go Oh, you're going out The same way you came in Makes no Skid Row Joe or Superstar You're going out the same way you came in Yeah, you're going out the same way you came in Let's take a walk 
some place where we can talk. Yes, I know that you promised to John. You won't hurt anyone. We just have a little fun. Cause I know that you promised to John. We walked behind a tree and she gave her lips to me. Even though she was promised to John I guess she's with him now She should be anyhow Cause she said she was promised to John I'm promised to John 